Hi, I'm Pastor Dave, teaching evangelist for Lamb and Lion Ministries. Now currently, Lamb and Lion has a group touring Israel. I'm sure they're having an amazing time. If you've never been to Israel, let me encourage you to do so. It's an experience that will last a lifetime. Now, when people hear I have been to Israel, I often get asked the same question, and it's really a hard question to answer. The question they ask me is, do you have a favorite site? That's hard to answer because there are so many sites that have meaning and, and give me the holy goosebumps just being there. However, one site does provoke some deep personal reflection. To the very north of Israel, just, just south of the Syrian border, is Caesarea Philippi. And often I find if people are not familiar with the site, they're familiar with what took place there. This is where Jesus asked the disciples, who do people say that I am? The disciples answered, well, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, some say Jeremiah. Then Jesus asked the personal, penetrating question, who do you say that I am? Peter responds by saying, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus replies to Peter's confession, and it's, it's Jesus' response that, that many people do remember. You know, for giving the answer that he gave, Jesus said to Peter, blessed are you. Then Jesus makes the statement, which is more, well, it's more well known. He says, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades or hell will not prevail against it or overcome it. Now, please understand Peter's confession forever changed the relationship between Jesus and his disciples. They are now declaring Jesus' deity. He is no longer a rabbi or a teacher or a good man. He is the son of God, the Messiah. For upon this rock, I will build my church. Okay, so here's the question. What rock? What is the rock Jesus is referring to? Some believe Peter was the rock. And the problem with that answer is that the term rock is used over 30 times in the Old Testament. And every time it's used to speak of God, the term rock in scripture never refers to a human. In the Middle East, a common method of speech is to speak descriptively by using pictures. Words like rock, sh shepherd, fortress, they're commonly used to describe things, whereas in the West, we use words, not pictures. To describe things, we say something is loving or peaceful or powerful or forgiving. That's how writers in the West may describe Jesus. Now, I mention this because in Caesarea Philippi, there was a huge word picture standing right there in front of the disciples. Jesus asked them this relationship-changing question. This rock is not a rock like one would see laying on the ground. This rock is a literal mountainside, and the gate of hell is a former pagan temple whose entrance is believed to be right there at the base of this mountainside. So what is the rock? The rock is Jesus. What is the foundation of the church? It is the acknowledgement of Jesus as Lord. Peter proclaimed the deity of Jesus. Jesus would build the church based on the confession and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Peter himself confirms that his confession of Jesus as Messiah is true. In 1 Peter 2, he says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders reject has become a capstone, a stone that causes men to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. You know, the Apostle Paul writes in Romans 9, what then shall we say, that the Gentiles who do not pursue righteousness, have they obtained it? No, they stumble over the stumbling stone. As it is written, see, I lay in Zion a stone that causes men to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. And the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. See, Paul confirms Peter's confession that the rock that causes Israel to stumble is Jesus as they both use the same Old Testament passage to verify their testimony. Both Peter and Paul quote Isaiah 28, who is speaking prophetically of the coming Messiah. Both New Testament authors confirm the rock refers to Christ. Peter, after he personally acknowledged Jesus, the rock, he preached this truth to all of Israel in Acts chapter 4. Speaking of Christ, Peter says, This is the stone the builders rejected, which has become the chief cornerstone. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. See, that rock Jesus is our salvation. The promise and fulfillment of eternal life is what the church is built upon. 
Salvation is found in the person of Christ, not in the church or in the sacraments or in any human. Jesus said he would build his church based on the confession that he is the Messiah, the Son of God. The rock Jesus spoke of in Matthew 16 was Peter's confession. Now, this is where it becomes personal. In Caesarea Philippi, the disciples were asked, who do you say I am? That day in front of a pagan temple in a pagan region, they confessed Jesus as Lord. The disciples are not the only ones who have to answer that question. You and I also have to answer the same question. Who do you say Jesus is?